So my last question is that you state that food production isn't the same as ending hunger, as we've seen throughout the Green Revolution. So how can food be more equitably distributed to ensure that we can feed the world? Well, I mean, I, I think you know th th these ideas of equity are, uh, are important. I mean, I, I think we we ought to guard against um, some of the uh, it, it, without a concept of power without understanding where power resides in the food system, we're not going to be able to tackle this problem of distribution. Um, we, you know, we produce more calories than ever before per person. And yet, as you, you, know, as, as you observed, there, there are a billion people who are going hungry. There's a great deal of inequity. Um, we need to be tackling those inequities in power. And it's been very exciting over the past few years to see food, particularly in the global north, climb up everyone's agenda. Everyone's interested in food now. Uh, and part of that is because um, you know, the, the, I mean, in part through the, the, the 2000s, when people were looking for practical things that they could do, and dissent was criminalized and continues to be criminalized, but, but growing food and distributing food like, is, it was an easy sort of low-hanging fruit for political action. And so you have a lot of people very concerned about food right now, and I'm excited by the idea of eating locally and seasonally and what have you, and you have a lot of local food system stuff going on. That's terrific. But it's not enough because, it, 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 as, you know, as you say, it's possible for us to imagine a world where cities produce enough food within them to feed everyone, but the people who actually need to eat don't get it. Uh, and so what we need is a lot more democratic engagement in the food system to ensure that the right to food, which is on every nation's, you know, uh, the, 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 at least recognized by every nation as a, as a legitimate human right, that that right is respected. Uh, and that means policy change at the national, regional, and local levels. Um, th there's, no, there's no one thing that I can say, well, if we do this, everything is going to be great. Because hunger is such a complex issue, there is no one thing that you can do. Uh, but, but there is a suite of things that you can do that emerge from community deliberation about, um, about hunger and food production. And this is an idea that, that the international peasant movement, La Via Campesina, uh, have uh, pushed forward for the past uh, over a decade. And this is their idea of food sovereignty. Food sovereignty is uh, the idea that communities should have uh, control, uh, have a right to shape their own food and agriculture policy. And that means that farmers and farm workers are you know, at the same table as uh, consumers and um, you know, schools and uh, education programs and you know, the, the prison industrial complex. And you have you know, government and uh, you know, small businesses. And everyone getting together to make sure that, that what we have is uh, an eradication of hunger. And it, it's been really interesting to see that Canada's taking an, a, a very important lead here. Toronto is actually a, uh, a sort of hub, for example, of organizing around this. The, the Toronto Food Policy Council is precisely a mechanism for getting institutional buyers of food and farmers and farm workers and unions and whatever together to figure out how to end hunger. Similarly, um, there's a, a, an organization called The Stop uh, in Toronto that, that is a food bank essentially, that wants to put itself out of business. I mean, there's, there's nothing good about living in a society that, that needs food banks, right? The, the fact that we have food banks, and we have so many of them that they're growing, is an indictment of the world in which we live. Uh, and so this food bank says, well, look, we, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't exist as a food bank. What we should exist as is as a community resource center and as a place for people to grow food and learn about food. And so that's what they do. The, the, the stop is, of course, you know, they understand that there is a dignified emergency among the poor. And so they distribute food and they make food, food available, you know, cans of whatever it is that people want. Um, but they also have a greenhouse where people can grow food. Uh, they have um, a school where, uh, you know, like an, an edible schoolyard kind of project where uh, young people come in and learn about the food system. And I have to say, I mean, some of the questions I got from them are comparable to graduate level questions I've got from, you know, from, 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 people, who, from people like you. I mean, they're really amazing kids, an amazing education program. And they are also a community activism uh, center, so that they, they help people understand what their entitlements are from the government. But they also you know, sponsor and, and, and uh, foment uh, social change so that we never need to have food banks in our societies ever again. These are just two examples of the kinds of policy arenas and kinds of interventions that, that are necessary. But the common thread seems to me that the people need to take power back in the food system, whether it's, you know, as we have in San Francisco, banning the, you know, the marketing of toys in, uh, uh, in Happy Meals. This, is, this, this doesn't seem like it's about ending hunger, but it is. It's about reducing the power that, that food corporations have over our diets and over the way we think about food. Everything from that to changing, you know, removing agriculture from the World Trade Organization. These are um, important interventions. Uh, and all, you know, at their heart, all of them are about confronting power. And that's, in fact, why one of the slogans for food sovereignty is, is about gender. It's about you know, food sovereignty as an end to all forms of violence against women. 
Uh, and again, this gets back to this idea of power, about inequitable distribution of food within the home. Uh, and again, you, you, you know, the figure of 60% of the people going hungry today being women or girls. In the United States, 35% of female-headed households are food insecure. You, you know, th these figures are not accidental. This is the way, again, our system is set up, taking women's labor for granted uh, and underpaying women for 70% you know, uh, of what men get for the same work, for example, in, in, in the global north. These kinds of inequities in power matter when we're talking about the food system. Uh, and challenging them from the household all the way up to um, the World Trade Organization is, I think, what we need to be doing to bring that equity back.